Hello, 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 hello. Uh, welcome back. So, here I am. Uh, I'm going to edit some more photos. Um, let's see what we want to start off. Oh, hey, weird thing happened last time we talked. I couldn't get that photograph to load, for those of you that, here, that were here last time. And look, on my website, it's here like six, seven times. Kind of annoying. All right, so. Let's see if I can refresh on Weebly. Let's see if I can figure out what's going on. Oops. I hope they're still not showing up here. All right. I'm going to have to have a talk with Weebly because I here's the problem. I can't delete the other six from here um, because they're not here. So, yeah, annoying. Um, all right, that's a problem. All right, um, I think I'm, I'm think maybe I'm a little done with Spain for right now. <clears throat> I'm never done with Spain, but you know what I mean. Uh, let's go back to the Galapagos and Amazon because I never got finished um, editing photos there before uh, leaving for Spain. So let's see what we got. Actually, let me, let me get to do that attribute thing first and see if there are any here that I haven't published. Oh yeah, this was a really cool, cool uh, cathedral in Quito. Yeah, Quito, Ecuador. Um, just a really ornate, um, we're up in the choir loft, so it's, it's kind of cool, kind of interesting. Um, I think it's a lot of money spent on buildings, but hey, you know, that's me. Oh, I, you know what? This is a friend of mine that I met on the tour. And aside from the fact that there's a, a, a friend in the photograph, I just really love this. Um, I could get rid of her, I suppose. <laughs> let's, let's try that. It's not that she's a bad friend. Um, hold on. There's a better... No. That's nice because of the wing, but I don't know. All right, let's do this one. Um, sorry, Shannon. I'm, I'm going <clears> to <throat> make you disappear. She already has a copy of it, so she's cool with it, I'm sure. This is one of the problems with the spot healing brush is that it doesn't, yeah, it's not perfect. Let's just do all of that. That was see, Now that worked out well. And I'll tell you why it worked out well. It worked out well because there is, there's pattern behind her. So it removed um, her and picked up the pattern behind it, as opposed to when I was up here doing it, there's very little pattern in the sky, so it had a, a much more of a problem. Um, Lightroom likes pattern uh, that it can copy, uh, which makes sense.
And we're going to be kind of, have to be kind of tricky in here because we don't want to mess with the wing. So that's going to need to be really finite work there. Oops, I lost a bit of wing there. Don't want to do that. Hope. Not gonna lie, this is this part's really hard. Um, it's hard to get right. Let's try the clone stamp. Let's see if that works any better. Um, for those of you that that aren't uh, users of. Um, aren't users of Lightroom. I'm in the clone stamp. You're taking some pixels from one place and putting it to the other. So you just hold down the alt key to pick up some pixels from another area and you are putting them here. You see where it's got the, the little plus to the right. It's that's where it's picking up the pixels from. So, I mean, that's a little bit better. It's not perfect, but, um, whoops, wrong direction. I use the parentheses key to make it bigger and smaller as well. Uh, we can take from like right here. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's take from right here. I make it a little bit bigger. Whoops. Control, <clears throat> sorry, Control Z to remove. I'm gonna take that there and just move the line. And take that there and put the wing back. No, no, let's go back. I, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not happy with that. All right. Um, you know what? I'm going to go back even further. Let's see. All right. That's, that's kind of the nice part is that you can always control Z, go back a little bit. You know what? I want to control Z back to where... where I was here. Um... Let's do this.
Not perfect, but... <clears throat> But okay. Um, I think I think that'll work. Ah, oh, my eyes are killing me, man. Does that wash me out? No, it doesn't. Okay, good. I hate working in the dark. Um, mm. That reminds me, another gadget. I like to start with gadgets. <clears throat> Except this one is kind of tucked in. I'm gonna have to bring this forward. Okay, so bring it forward a little bit more. You can see this, it's called a, um, a Spider Pro. And you, this comes apart like this and um, this part hangs on the front of your monitor and this part drapes over the back. And then it's got a program. This one's a Spider 5. Hang on, I can push it back. Um, made by data color this is really pretty invaluable for with regards to um, keeping your monitor calibrated <coughs> excuse me it, um, it it keeps it calibrated with color and and your ambient room light which you typically edit in and it makes sure that uh, both of your screens are calibrated you know together with the same uh, tones the same warmth and what have you to try and give you the the you know clearest and truest colors possible so um, I always like to talk about a product uh, again nobody's sponsoring me for these things it's just these are tools I use so I'd like to share them with you um, to help you help you um, uh, you know have some better tools that maybe you didn't know about and um, I like to share my tools. I don't, I, don't, I don't like keeping things secret. There's no need. We're all a community, right? So I'm, whoa, I went too far. I'm going to pull that and just fix these pixels that I don't like um, what happened to them when I, there we go. And I'm gonna, oh, fix that up as well. You don't want it to look like you, uh, made adjustments. You want, you want it to look as natural as possible. All right, now let's just see if we have any um, imperfections like rain spots or anything else. Remember, it does happen. Um, when you're out in the field taking photographs, oh, that's kind of, yeah, that's better. When you're out in the field taking photographs, you, you, you just, you can't help it. You can try and keep your lenses um, as clean as possible, but you, you know, sometimes can't clean until you get back to a safe place i.e. not out in the wild. I'm sure I hear a dog somewhere. Oh, there it is. Here's Beazle to say hello, Beazle. Okay. You know, now you know why Beazle's prominent in the name there because um, he's always by my side. All right. I think I like um, the Photoshop adjustments we've made. Let's go back to light really. And she's gone, sorry my friend. Um, didn't want you in the picture. Not that you're not a nice person, just didn't want you in the picture. Okay, so 
This is a um, Galapagos flycatcher, one of the many flycatchers they have there. But this one is kind of funny. He's he's um, as he, they are attracted to uh, shiny things, <laughs> kind of like a lot of humans. You know, come on, we're all attracted to shiny things. Um, <clears throat> the flycatcher is attracted to the the mirror in sunglasses and the end of lenses. Uh, as you saw, binoculars. My friend had a, bino a set of binoculars. Um, and it's, it's crazy because they'll literally come and, and flutter right in front of you. And I do have some photographs of them fluttering in front of me. Um, although um, these, just, these just came out better when I was taking pictures of them fluttering at other people. Um, uh, purely because, you know, in, until, the, until a bird kind of lands in front of you, um, you're, you're going to get too much movement uh, up too close. So it can be done, but it I didn't have my long lens. So now you know where that goes. But this one was good because, uh, you know, I, I caught it going towards a friend. And their binoculars. Um, again, high shutter speed. If you look over here on the right, you see I was all the way up to ISO 400. Um, and let's see if I can... Um, let me let me give you um, other metadata. Uh, lens setting, exposure and ISO, uh, focal distance. Um, I like putting those on there. Um, let's see. Oh, shutter speed. That's what I'm looking for. And f stop. Okay, so we got some more information on there. So. This was done in ISO 400, 120, uh, 250th of a second of a second was the shutter speed. So very, very fast shutter speed, high ISO, <clears throat> shot at F13. So, and, and it, you can see it was only um, shot with my seven, uh, 24, Nikkor 2470 uh, at 70 millimeters. Um, hey, AMC, thanks for joining. Um, it's only, but it's only shot at um, 70 millimeters. Because that's all I had with me. Long lens died. Uh, but at, when when you take something um, up to, and, and I know it's counterintuitive, very bright light in the middle of the Galapagos to go such a high, SO, a high ISO. But with, if you want to capture movement, again, that, that moment in life, you have to go a high SO and a very, very fast shutter speed um, in order to capture it. I mean, that, that bird is in the midst of flight. And you can see, let me just um, make it larger so you can you can see just how um, detailed the bird is, and that's because of the fast shutter speed. So cameras like the like the like the Z62, um, you know, <laughs> Canon. I don't like to mention them. <laughs> I, look, I love all cameras, but there's just a long-standing war between Nikon and Canon. And most of you know that. Um, the Sony, Canon, Nikon, Fuji, they all have cameras that can really capture uh, shutter speed. So, uh, it, it, uh, you know, capture things with very high shutter speed. Some operate better in higher um, ISOs than others, and that's really the, the catch. Now, I, I do want to, I actually want to take this back into... Um, Oh, I haven't done anything yet, so let me just go back there. I see some imperfections I just want to get rid of. Um, one of the things that is important with if if you're planning on doing something like bird photography, which which is it, it's a it's a realm all unto its own. Um, some people just specialize in uh, you know birds. I love doing bird photography. It's not my primary, but it, but, I, you know, I do enjoy it, uh, as you can see, when I'm in a place that, uh, where's my, there's my save. I lost my brain there for a minute. Um, when I'm in a place that has um, really good um, wildlife, like the Galapagos, I mean, you know, come on. Every, you, you, you can't stop, you just can't stop shooting photographs. It's just incredible. Um, once in a lifetime trip. Um, I hope to make it twice in a lifetime because I would love to go back. But when you're when you're there and you are 
um, you know, shooting things like birds. Don't be afraid to experiment. Um, you're not going to get a shot like this leaving it on automatic. It's just not going to happen. You're also not going to get a shot like this with a cell phone. So there were some people on the trip that, that just went with cell phones. Uh, the iPhone 3. Sorry, 13. 3. <clears throat> That would have been bad. iPhone 13, iPhone 13. The woman I took a picture of, her and her husband only shot with their iPhone 13 and then relied on me for other pictures. Um, they knew I was going. They're the ones that kind of conned me into going with them. Uh, I met them on another trip. So <clears throat> the, the fact of the matter is you're not going to get certain things with a, a, you know an iPhone or a, an Android, but that's okay. If that's not, again, if that's not your, your, your function, if that's not your, your focus, it doesn't matter. Um, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter what you are, <clears throat> sorry, what your focus is. Their focus was to capture, um, just memories and enjoy themselves. And they relied on me for, uh, the more professional stuff, which is, I think, kind of why they, you know, conned me into going. I say conned, but I went willingly. Um, Okay, so, yeah, most SLRs, DSLRs, or, you know, um, higher-end cameras that even aren't DSLRs will do this. It's the degree into how well it shoots in shutter priority and how many megapixels. This is where the megapixels do matter because you're trying to capture as much of the the in flight as possible um, especially if you're going to blow the photograph up at all so that's the only difference here now i do want to crop this a little bit only because um I, I i don't think we need as much of the sky and we don't really need as much of the ground the the lava and the rock and we really want to bring the focus, the focal point, um, is the bird, is the uh, the flycatcher here. So we're going to bring him into the, the two-thirds here. We're going to keep our two-thirds perspective. We'll bring that up a little bit. And there we go. Now, keeping it in that two-thirds perspective is, you know, is really, we, we've got our background. We don't need to um, do any more blurring because the bokeh was, was fine with this due to the focal length and the distance of the background. But the colors of the bird just really pop. Now we, we can we can do, I haven't done anything in Lightroom yet, so we could dehaze it a tiny, tiny drop. It's just because I really like dehaze. Um, we can do a little bit of clarity. That will bring up the feathers even more. Um, bling the black stone. I love to do that. We don't want to do anything else there. And, you know, we could, I, you know, I'm not a big fan of vibrance, but let me bring that back down to zero. Not a big fan of vibrance. I'm not a big fan of saturation uh, because people for years, I mean, decades overused those two as really the, <clears throat> the only ways to adjust their photographs I mean, prior to all the other things and other programs you could, uh, you could do. But in this particular case, we're pretty safe at doing that because we only the only thing we're highlighting is the bird. Uh, there aren't any other you know vibrant colors in the photograph, so we can go ahead and bring up the vibrance and the saturation, and that just really made the yellow in the bird and the bird itself pop a little bit more. So normally I wouldn't do that, but I just I do happen to love that um, in this type of situation. I, I want to make it a little bit smaller. Again, I want to keep those clouds in there because I, it, it gives a little bit of um, you don't you don't want just like a plain background. You want to keep that integrity, but we made it a little bit smaller, um, so we took off a little bit more of the right hand side while keeping the bird in the two thirds. And we're going to export that. We're not going to upload it because you, know, you see the problems that I'm having. Uh, but, okay, so now we're not in Spain anymore. So let's choose. 
web page, web size. Antarctic? No. Ecuador. Couldn't remember where I was. Come on. You can do it. All right. Let me cancel that. Try it again. Oh, we can just do it that way. <laughs> that was easy. All right. So this is a <clears throat> Genovese flycatcher. Um, Genovese Island in lower left white is fine. Genovese Island in the Galapagos. Can't recommend. <coughs> oh, sorry. Cannot recommend the Galapagos enough. Um, not cheap to get there. Uh, cheap to cheap to get to Ecuador from the United States. Actually, even from Europe, um, it's not too bad. Um, getting to the Galapagos is a bit more tricky. Uh, and the reason being is you can't, you, there used to be ways that you could do some day trips, go to the island, do, do some day trips to do one or more of the islands. You're never going to get to Genovese that way. Um, there are a lot of the islands that are really unique that you're not going to get to doing it that way, but you can still get to the Galapagos. Because of COVID, however, <clears throat> there are fewer of those tour operators that actually survived, unfortunately. So it, it's left most people in the lurch as far as being able to really get out to the islands and see see the wildlife. It'll come back eventually, I believe, uh, um, hopefully. But there, there is the complication of the fact that in order to go to the Galapagos, you have to have a government permit. Um, it is a protected wildlife. Every island is a protected uh, area. Uh, thanks to the foresight of the Ecuadorian government, uh, can't say enough about it. They really, really, a long time ago, had foresight into um, protecting this, this wild area. <clears throat> so um, you can't even buy property, own property, or live on the Galapagos unless you are from the Galapagos or marry into somebody, you know, marry somebody from the Galapagos. Um, I did offer to marry the tour guide. Um, yeah, he was cute. But, you know, that way he could, uh, I should say, not tour guide. He was a naturalist. Um, They're all naturalists. But, you know, I figured he could live six months here and get American citizenship and we'll live six months there and, you know, I can live on the Galapagos Islands. So I thought it was a fair deal. Uh, I don't think his girlfriend really would have thought it was a fair deal. Or my spouse. I'm already married, so that's kind of a problem. But anyway, <clears throat> I, I loved it. So it is harder to get there. You do have to go on an organized um, um, a boat, a ship. Uh, we went on a catamaran yacht, which was just incredible. Uh, but, it, you know, if it's something that really interests you, Save save your pennies because it's 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 a once in a lifetime deal. It really is. It's, it's incredible. I can't say enough about it. Mm. And it's something I always wanted to do, but thought, okay, it's on my bucket list. You know, someday I'll go. Until these people I knew were going, and um, we had had such a good time with each other on previous on a previous trip, and I thought, you know, I've always wanted to go. Here's an opportunity presenting itself. Um, that is, uh, fate. So, anyway. All right, so the bird. Um, what, uh, did, did, did it, yeah, we, we exported it. So, I mean, I'm gonna, let's pull it up in the export. Let's get out of Spain. See how it looks. Oh, here you can see a bunch of, um, things that I've, uh, that I've already edited. Oh, here's another one. This is a flycatcher on Santiago Island. Uh, let's open that with paint. So that was that was another one in flight. Uh, da -da -da -da. Oh, a frigate bird. These are. Beasel thinks he hears something. 
It's a little insane. Um, this is a frigate bird. When, when he wants to mate or court, uh, that thing blows up into like this big red balloon. Unfortunately, um, his, his, <laughs> his balloon was deflated. Um, he wasn't in, he wasn't in the mood <laughs> for courting when I got the photograph, but, uh, they are quite the sight. Uh, it's no, it's a great frigate. That was a great frigate. Um, the Galapagos Hawk. Pretty, on Española Island, pretty uncommon to actually see a hawk. And it it didn't move. It just sat there as I walked around it with my 70 millimeter lens um, getting this photograph. Um, okay, so yeah, this is the, whoops. This is the one, mm -hmm. this is the one we just did. Me likey. I like how that came out. All right, um, what else we got? We have red-footed boobies, blue-footed boobies. Oh, hey, wait, do you, oh, wait, this is, all right, this, let me show you this first. So, that's a sunrise on Floriana Island as the turtles are going back out to sea after they've, um, laid their eggs and they lay all their eggs they kind of bury it really kind of half ass um they bury it and then that's it they don't care about their kids they're gone they're off to go live their lives and mate again um have more have more babies and leave them and the babies will hatch and and eventually they will go out to sea as well so kind of an odd one Oh, hey, wait a minute, gotta show you this. Monsters! These dudes are prehistoric. That does not look big in this photograph, but I kid you not, it it was uh, bigger than a Great Dane. Way bigger than a Great, like two Great Danes. Um, they're huge. The giant tortoises of the Galapagos Islands. Uh, that's what everybody hears about when they think of the Galapagos is the giant tortoises. They do not disappoint. Uh, they're uh, they don't run very fast, so you know, and they're not afraid of you either. They're they're not they're not dangerous. They don't have any natural predators. They're not looking. They don't think you're a natural predator. They're not going to snap at you. They're not snapping turtles, but they're just massive and and incredible. Um, we stayed at a tree house uh, that was kind of in the path of the tortoises coming down from the uh, hills on uh, Santa Cruz Island. And they come down the hills and then they go to the beach and they uh, lay their eggs and then they they go back up. So we're in the path at, at this particular place and it just, just incredible. I, I could have I could have spent three days there easily just looking at these tortoises and uh, photographing them because they were wild. Um, do I not have any blue-footed boobies here? Are you kidding me? All right, that's a flying one, but oh, okay. So we let's go edit a, a, a let's go edit a booby. <laughs> um, got attributes here um here's a blue boot that's a blue footed no 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 sorry that's a nazca booby sorry and, and you can t it's a booby but you can tell there are three kinds there's the nazca booby um the in the galapagos there's a nazca booby the red footed booby and the blue footed booby the red footed booby is only in um the far northern islands and only in um i think two islands that you can see it genovese being the one which I happen to be fortunate enough to go to. Uh, the Nazca booby is much more common. You know, the difference between between them, they all look like boobies, but the, the difference is that um, the Nazca, of course, doesn't have any color on the feet. Uh, the blue has blue feet and the red has red feet. So um, Mother Nature kind of made it easy for us to figure out, uh, for me, because I, you know, people, people that, some people that were with me that were birders were like, oh, there's the, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I, I'm, okay, sure. Uh, yeah, I, that's the Tropica. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know. Um, for me, it was really cool because I was able to tell a couple of birds apart. Now, where are the blue-footed boobies? Blue. 
two-footed boobies. Where are you? No, where, where, what? Oh, there's one. There's a blue-footed booby. And, and, and there's no enhancement of color here. And you, you can tell because um, the Sally Lightfoots are not that red. They were, they were, I think they had just molted, so they were not that red. Um, if I had enhanced this color at all, you, those would have popped uh, a lot more red. In fact, let's, let's do that. You can see. Um, that is, that is the color of the blue-footed booby. What? It's crazy. So if I pick up the vibrance and the saturation, which I'll, I'll put back, uh, you can see that the crabs get a little bit more red. Uh, look at that. Is that crazy? I mean, Mother Nature. What? Blue-footed booby. Um, this one's okay. It's just okay. I'm not in love with it. I took so many blue-footed booby pictures, so let's stay right there. Oh, wait, hang on. There's this one, too. Eh. I don't like the way the sun is hitting it. All right, let's 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 stay here, but let's take off the attributes. This is how I <clears throat> do my workflow. I liked this photograph initially, but... You see, I haven't exported it because I wasn't in love with it. So actually, I'm going to take the stars off because I haven't really, uh, I haven't done anything. Keeping the flag so it'll stay in the attributes. But let's see if I can, if we can get a better shot. Something that pleases me. That Not that one. I'm going to remove that. Um, we were on a... Um, a panga. A, like a inflatable uh, with an engine of course uh, and, and it was pretty bouncy so I did not put it on shutter priority because the bird was just sitting there so I didn't want to put it on shutter priority with the bird not in flight but the panga was moving I knew we were gonna get close enough for me to get a shot with aperture priority so that's why you that's why you see some of these this way I don't like that oh definitely Ugh. I mean, I saw a ton of blue-footed boobies. This is just one time. Uh, oh, this is the one I this is the one I chose. Well, it's not bad. Eh. Let's see if we can find another one. There were tons of blue-footed boobies. Load, oh, hang on, this was creepy. Creepy! I don't need, it's a crab. Spider crab, I don't know. It's just creepy. Blue-footed boobies, where are you? Oh, here, here's a good perspective picture. I mean, this is a small pond, and look at these guys. Just... Crazy. <clears throat> oh, this is the tree house. Uh, it was really super cool. And look, the tortoise was uh, right underneath. Uh, when we woke up in the morning, the tortoise was right underneath the tree house. Uh, was very, very cool. Go get him, Beasel. Oh, this was funny. All right, all right. You guys want to hear a story? Super funny. So, turtles, sorry, tortoises, tortoises, um, you would not think that they have any type of um, care or compassion for one another. 
Um, this little guy here in the center, he has fallen over on his side and he is struggling. You know the old story about the turtle oh, on his back. Okay, little dude is struggling. These are these are small baby uh, tortoises. These will grow up to be the big monsters. Um, and they can live well over 100 years. Um, this guy was struggling. And one of the tortoise, one of the little tortoises came up. Some of them were trying to help him up, couldn't do it. One of the tortoises literally walked over and grabbed him, his foot, the tortoise's foot with his mouth, and pulled him back over to help him. I, I mean, it had to be one of the most incredible things I've ever seen. Uh, who knew that they cared about one another? I mean, there was a... There was this genuine concern for another turtle in trouble, and it went over and helped it. I, I, to me, that was that was. I mean, Darwin. Yes, I get it. Why you were there on the Galapagos? Um, that, that, um, that willingness. You can see him really struggling. That willingness to go help a fellow creature. Um, you know, we don't think of these things having, you know, very much of intelligence. I mean, they're, they're very low on the intelligence scale and what have you. But, I mean, if anything can turn someone into a vegetarian, um, I am not. But if anyone can, if anything could turn someone into a vegetarian, I would think watching an animal at this level of um, intelligence having compassion and and helping that tortoise to be right-sighted I, I just it was really kind of a a pivotal moment for me uh in a really unexpected place in an unexpected time uh watching that that level of compassion i mean you know we see it with our dogs and cats and what have you and we see it between you know humans and those animals but a tortoise um completely unexpected for me to actually witness it. It was really cool. Uh, yeah, okay, here's some of the big guys. Uh, you see some of the different shapes. These are from different islands. Different islands um, have a different shape. This is like, I think it's called like a humpback um, tortoise. Just crazy. Sorry, my coffee's getting cold because I talk too much. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, right, blue-footed boobies. We're looking for boobies. Um, I know all you guys out there are saying, yeah, looking for boobies, yeah. I get it, don't worry. Um, I said it for you. Where are you, boobies? You know, and, and, and I was there for 10 days and traveling around the different islands. And I don't care how long I was there and how many hikes I had done. Every time I saw an animal, it, it could be the same animal I took already 100 photographs of. Um, seeing it again, I was just as excited. It really is a magical place. Uh, these are Nazca. These are Nazca boobies. Okay. Oh, you know what? I see a photo of a friend I need to edit later and then send to her. Oh, these are the pangas that I was talking about, the, the inflatable dinghies um, that you go out on. Um, that's some of my other friends from the from the group. Uh, th this is the in this is the inside of the cabin. All the cabins have uh, balconies. Really cool. Again, natural habitat uh, adventures. Nat have adventures. Uh, I'm giving them a shout out. Uh, I do not get paid by them. I pay for my own trips. I don't even get a break. Um, very cool stuff though. 
they do a phenomenal job. They're, you know, their focus is wildlife. That's you know, as as the travel arm of the World Wildlife Fund. Uh, that is their their focus is wildlife conservation, uh, bringing people to places that they, you know, wouldn't normally get to, uh, for a price. I'm not gonna not gonna lie, but they do a phenomenal job. They think of everything A to Z. I know I have a lot more pictures of blue boobies, so let's look for them. No, Nazca boobie. I sound like I've become an expert on these. Not. Uh, oh, this is apparently, I don't remember what it is. Oyster catcher. I do remember. Ooh, it's an oyster catcher. Apparently, very rare to see. We saw about five of them, I guess, in two, uh, two different places. Um, so it's really cool. Um, I just love the red beak and the red eyes. Uh, the oyster catcher does not catch oysters. I don't know why it's called that. I'm sure one of you out there knows. Lots and lots of sea lions too. Here you can see the the um, marine iguana. Actually, let's do it. There you go. Um, the marine iguana uh, getting ready to jump in the water. They can't. They can't stay in the water um, for a long. Whoops, for a long time. Um, they're just in there for a little while, but they do. That's how they feed. They they actually feed in the water. this camp no these are penguins Galapagos penguins <clears throat> I've made it um, one of my life's goals to uh, photograph all the penguins in the world um, there are a couple of species that you know deep in Antarctica that I may or may not ever get to although it's still on my bucket list everybody's got to have a bu bucket list um, but I've, I've photographed the ones in South Africa. I have not, uh, I think there's some in New Zealand, but I have not been to New Zealand yet. Um, uh, the Galapagos penguins, um, and some in Argentina, the Gent, uh, off of Argentina, the Gen 2, and a couple of others. And then of course, um, when I, I go to Antarctica in November, I will be snapping oh i don't know a million pictures a million photographs i'm being conservative um poop okay so i've got those blue footage and d yeah that's a blue footed but he just I mean, I like it as a as a silhouette, but it's a blue-footed booby, so a silhouette is not what I'm going for. Although that's kind of cool with the sun as a silhouette. As a silhouette, I just want to see something here. Yeah. All right. That's just a nice silhouette bird sunset photograph, but it doesn't highlight the fact that it's a blue-footed booby. Well, that's not too bad. Let's go develop that. Uh, bring up the shadows a bit more. I'm trying to capture the blue there. Uh, if we do some saturation, see that's going to saturate the sky, and we don't want to do that. We can. If 
bring up the midtones. center. Come on, there we go. Back to center. Um, hmm. There is, not in the tongue curve, I don't want to um, I could actually. No, that's. No, we don't want to play with the tone. All right, there is. You know, we're gonna to have to take it to uh, Photoshop. Yeah, let's do a Photoshop. Oops. The reason. Sorry, not Photoshop. Let's take it to Luminar. That's the fun part about this is that you can really play around. Um, if you don't like it, you just fix it. Essentials color. Well, let's go to advanced settings. If we look at luminance, I mean, the luminance is done a little bit. Saturation. No, we. Whoops. Again, we don't want to saturate the sky. It's not really saturating anything, so I'm okay with that. Uh, let's see. Oh, actually, I did like the luminance a little bit. Okay, so we'll close that one. Let's see what... AI accent does. Hang on, let me. Oh, I kind of like that. That's not too bad. It's still not bringing up the blue here, but uh, let's take that back. We didn't really notice the Sally Lightfoot crabs there, so that that is kind of cool. I do like that. Yeah, let's see what we can do with light. Can make it a little warmer. Ooh, that's too warm. Hmm. Nope, not what we want. All right, so we got some other things we can do. Uh, nope. Portrait. Nope. Let's go to the professional one. Split tone. So this is this is one that I was um, <clears throat> thinking of doing split toning. Um, we do. Let's make this smaller. I just really wanna. Oh. So we're going to highlight that and then
I see? I don't, really don't want to make that sky any more brilliant. look in gigapixel oh this may be the one that's not working yeah it's the one that's not working okay No, you know what? I, I don't want to. I don't want to process this too much. It, it, it's really, it's really not. Um, giving me what I want. I don't know what fact. Uh, we could do blue primary. I'll be honest with you, I can't remember where it is for um, color grading. No, or is it already? For being able to um, adjust different parts of the photograph um, without doing a little more research. I think it's in the one, the program that I can't bring up, which is a little annoying. All right, we'll leave this one for right now. I've um, toyed with it enough. Yeah, you can see the blue a little bit more there. I wonder if I bring the, oh, hang on, that's not quick develop. If I bring the shadow up on this, oh, that's a little better. All right, I can work with that. We're more focused on the bird here, okay. We can work with this one. Let's let's actually. I don't want to get rid of the clouds because again, I, I like the the uh, variation in the sky. We can go up a little bit here. He's still in the two thirds. Okay. Oh, let's dehaze it. Definitely needs a little bit of dehazing. Why this one I like better. Um, I don't know what you think, but. Uh, this blue is different from this blue, and that's really what we're after. We don't want this to get lost in the expanse of the sky and have the blue, uh, the blue footed booby. And he's actually got a blue beak. We don't want those to disappear. <clears throat> I'm going to pump up the vibrance a touch, tiny touch, and the saturation a tiny touch because, again, I don't want to saturate the sky too much. Let me bring it down a little bit more. We don't want to saturate that too much. Okay. Um, we brought up the shadows. Let's deepen the blacks a little bit. I'm going to take the exposure down just a tad. Just, a, just really a touch. And bring the contrast up a little bit. All right. Now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this over to Photoshop. Always edit a copy with Lightroom adjustments. 
It's just safer that way. Just always leave it up the radio button there. You'll be good to go. All right. Now we got a few imperfections we want to sort out. Um, that's a bird. It looks like a drone back <laughs> there. But oh, it's not anything in on the lens. But we don't. it's just distracting to the eye. So we're going to get rid of it. And you see there are no water spots here because it was a beautifully clear day. I had cleaned the camera and the lenses and uh, good to go. Now, we could um, brighten these up. And let's see, we've got some hue and saturation. Um, let's make it more normal size so we can look at this. This is color. Whoa! We definitely don't want to do that. Um, you should never work on the master if you're if you're doing other things. You should do the layers. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that because I'm not going to use that layer. Gradients. And you can do, you can do a lot of things in uh, Photoshop. I am not a Photoshop expert. I'm like a baby with Photoshop, so you know maybe I'll work on learning Photoshop a bit more. Um, but I am I'm much more of a Lightroom user and in other programs. Um, okay, I don't. We could we I mean we could yeah we could dodge and burn. Um, burn is to lighten. Oh, it doesn't want me working on that. There we go. Um, because I got rid of it. See, I got rid of it. So we're not, we're not using that layer. We're just using this layer. Um, I could, I could do this a little bit just to, oh, I, I sorry. I did burn. <laughs> Why did I, I did burn. <laughs> What is wrong with me? All right, I could just lighten up the Sally's a little bit. You know, just to... We don't want them to be the focal point, but it is kind of nice to see them. So we're just lightening that up a little bit. Just this little Sally right here. And this little Sally right here. Sally Lightfoot! Those are the only two Sally's. So just like lightening those up a little bit. We don't have to, you know, bring any color to them or anything. They're, they're natural as they are. So I think we've gotten rid of those. The, we got rid of the, the bird drone. Uh, let's go ahead and save that. Magic. Yeah, see, I just, I just used the, um, the dodge tool just to lighten up the crabs a tiny drop without really taking away the, the focus from the bird or the integrity, but it, it, it is nice to know that they're there because it's another animal in the photograph. Um, I think I actually do want to crop the clouds down a little bit more. Crop the sky a little bit more. Too much sky. All right, now he's, he's in focus. That's a little bit better. Um, the beak, it's hard to see that the beak is blue here, and that's unfortunate but um, but that's okay we're focusing on the feet so we can see the feet the feet are right in our two-thirds area with the whole bird that's where our eye goes and that's what we want so that's not too bad a little bit better that is part of the problem you know when, when you're in places like this you don't get to choose hey I am only gonna photograph in the golden hour with the light in the absolute perfect um, position. You don't have that. You're, you're really, you're limited by where you are, when you are, and you have to capture the best photograph you can with what you've got. And that's one of the things I love about it, is being able to do that. Don't remember what that bird is called. Do not remember. Oh, these are called, no, these are boobies. 
there is a bird called a tropica, which has a really funny tail. That was kind of cool. These these are these guys are kind of cool too. Um, I can't remember what they're called. I have it written down somewhere. Um, I took a ton of these. Actually, I like that one better. Um, just a funky bird. And, and I mean, look how close I am. Doesn't care. Does not care. Absolutely zero care. Um, we want to. I, I want to actually bring that over a little bit more because we want to get his. I want to keep some of the green. I don't want all the sand. Uh, let's keep him like that. So his his face is kind of in one of the thirds. Um, we can totally dehaze a hair on this one. We don't want to dehaze too much. We do want to bring the blacks down because what that's going to do is take the head here and this part of the tail and even some of the body, but it's going to make the black pop. And we, we really want to make that jet black. Let me, let me show you. As taken, it's kind of like this. Cool. But if we bring the blacks in, look at how that eye just popped. We didn't have to play with saturation or hue or vibrance or any of those things. Just bringing the natural black of that bird head out made that red eye pop. Spetty! Lurk, lurk in, lurk in. Thanks, Spetty. I appreciate it. I love work lurkers. It's I'm I'm a work lurker, so um so that that totally you know brings out that that eye that that pops the eye out and that's what we want without having to um play with vibrance and saturation. Uh you those of you that have um, been watching me for a little bit now know that I'm not a fan of using hue and saturation because it really takes the integrity of what you shot out of it. It's not that I haven't used it, but I use it really, really sparingly. I mean, we used it on the blue-footed booby, but but use it very, very sparingly in certain situations. There are other tools you can use to bring out the natural color of what your, you and your camera have, have captured. And um, one of the things is, like I did here, uh, lowering the black so we enhance that that head the bird's head and then just naturally made that red eye pop so that i mean it's we're just our eyes are instantly drawn to the eye of the bird and uh, we're communing with nature so that's what i love to do there um shadows we don't really need to do anything with i'm gonna bring the highlights down just a tad i think um, just because there were some highlights here. Actually, let's see if I bring the shadows up. No, I, I, I don't like it. Let's do a little bit less with the highlights because I, I like a little bit of the sun on his head and keep the shadows where they are. Um, again, D. Hayes isn't going to do much for this photograph because he is primarily in the shade. So it's not going to do um, a great deal to that. We're getting rid of all of these. We're, whoops, actually, um, lens correction. It's always good to remove chromatic error, uh, aberration and enable profile corrections. Um, you don't have to, but definitely remove any chromatic aberration. Now, effects, we're not going to do anything. Um, I don't, well, maybe you want to get rid of the bird poop. Eh, let's, you know what, let's get rid of the bird poop. It looks like he just... Um, Got rid of his lunch, so a little distracting. Distracted me. I didn't even notice it, and then it distracted me. Okay, so let's go make sure we get the right tool. Spot healing, and we're just gonna spot heal the poop. That looks a little bit better. Looks, it's a little uh, less um nasty. All right, nothing else we need. Um, nothing else we need because you notice there's no trash to clean up. Galapagos. Um, can't uh, can't give enough credit to. Um, it was nice to see the bird poop disappear. Can't give enough credit to um, Ecuador for <laughs> for really preserving this beautiful place. Uh, we could bring up the vibrance a little bit here, but I don't want to. I don't want. I don't want to take. He's got red feet. It's cool. 
I don't want to take away from the natural vibrance of that eye on the head. So I like that. I'm going to flag it for later. Um, and again, I've, I've, you know, sometimes I'll flag something for later and then just come back to it and look at it again. I don't, I don't necessarily put everything into my webpage or onto Instagram right away because I like to, you know, kind of get a feel for what might be something I want to maybe edit a little bit more of or, um, not use at all. This really depends. These are, um, that is a, another marine iguana, um, from another island. They are, um, a lot less colorful than the other marine iguanas. Um, these marine iguanas, and, and something really fascinating about the marine iguanas is in the Galapagos is that they don't mate with marine iguanas from other islands typically. Uh, and they don't mate with land iguanas. Marine iguanas mate with marine iguanas. Land iguanas mate with land iguanas. However, um, these dark colored um, marine iguanas were found recently to have attempted mating with land iguanas. Um, they did produce eggs, but they were infertile. Um, because they're really two completely different species. Again, go Darwin. Uh, <laughs> until you're there, you, you don't really get the connection between Dar Darwin and the Galapagos Islands. But these animals have adapted. Uh, the marine iguanas, because they're surrounded by ocean, have adapted to feeding in the water. And they're able to stay underwater for a certain amount of time, feed, and then get back to land. Um, there are loads of... Um, you know, nature videos on YouTube and even on um, National Geographic, what have you. Um, and, some, and some have shown like the difficulty because they can only stay underwater for just so long. And if they don't get back to land in a certain amount of time, well, they die. Um, but that's, you know, that's how they've adapted it. You know, originally they were land iguanas, but they've adapted and they are now marine iguanas and a completely different species that, at, you know, like I said, has has tr they've seen them try to mate with on their own uh, land iguanas, but the uh, the eggs were infertile, so they produced no offspring. Um, so one of the things we found ourselves uh, saying constantly while on the Galapagos Islands is, "Oh, Darwin nailed it," uh, because it, it, you see it, you see what he saw. Um, every step of the way. It's really weird, really interesting. Um, I'll bring that up a little bit. This kind of animal I like to really bring, or this kind of photograph, I should say, I really like to bring up the clarity so we get to see those scales. Let me, let me do this. So as shot, you know, I mean, we could see the scales. That's great. But if I bring up the clarity, watch the scales just pop. And, and you really want to see that. You want to see that that pop. Um, the dehaze in a tiny drop. There we go. That See what the dehaze did there? Let me, let me bring that back down. Um, where's my dehaze? Okay, let me bring that. Okay, so it, it's all right, but if I bring that dehaze up just a little bit, not a lot, see how the background really kind of fades even a little bit more into the, the dark, into the background, and he pops a little bit more. All right, um, you know what? He's kind of centered, and I'm not really... Every once in a while, it's okay to have something centered. I want to keep that rock up there if I can. So let's bring this up here like that. But it's it's really, it is better to follow the truth two-thirds rule. Um, although, you know, I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. There are times when something just center 
works. It really depends on what it is. Portrait photography, when I do uh, photographs of, of people, of faces, it's dead center because that's what you want. You want to really be looking into the eyes. You want to, you want to be seeing the character of the face, the lines, uh, the imperfections, whatever. Uh, then I, I, it's front and center. But otherwise, yeah, the two-thirds rule is a good rule of thumb. Um, you know, those feet, whatever they're called. I don't know. There's little, little, little suction cups on there. Little grippers. Just a freaky little guy. But I like it. I like it. I like the way it is. So I'm going to Look at this. Got to show this to you. This is, okay, this is a, um, that bird with the, the red eye. Look at this uh, tagging on the rock in the Galapagos. Okay, it's from the 1950s and it's still there. Uh, pretty wild. 1950s tagging. <laughs> Aw, look at that red footed booby. Red feet, blue beak. What's nature thinking? What is nature thinking? Look at that. Look at that guy. What is Mother Nature thinking? Oh, there's the frigate bird. It's really too bad he had blown up his, he wasn't mating and his balloon wasn't blown up. When we first pulled up, before we were able to take photographs, um, before we were close enough, that balloon was out and it was pretty funny. Not gonna lie, I laughed a lot. That that little red balloon when he, when they're mating, when they're courting. Again, what was nature thinking, right? Oh, look at them. So in love. So cute. Oh, this was cool. So we, we had to walk through the mangroves, the water in the mangroves, and believe me, it was hot. It felt really good. Um, this is where we got, oh, we got some, yeah, pictures of fish, but this is where I, I'm walking right up to that red-footed booby. Not a care in the world, this guy. Not a care. Look at that. I am so close to him. This is not a telephoto lens. Um, doesn't care. Doesn't move. Not threatened. Um, zero shits given. Look at that. Doesn't care. I mean, looking at me probably as thinking I am more strange than I am looking at him or her thinking... They are more strange uh, with their red feet and their blue beak. Uh, they're seeing me with this, this camera and thinking, I'm a weirdo. I don't belong. Look at that. Just not a care. Not a care. Like, what are you doing here? Like, can I help you? I kind of like that photograph, actually. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to flag that. And the reason I like it is because, well, the wings are up, which is cool. Some good definition on the wings, but also there there was no shadow. If we go to the next photograph, see, there's, when when the bird's head turns, it produces the shadow on of the beak on there. And I kind of like this because it shows the blue, shows the eye, and then we've got no shadow there. Um, yeah, we could play with this one. to bring that out in so we can really get a good picture of it. Look at that. He, he's even got some 
feather on his beak for some reason. Maybe got into a fight? They will fight. I mean, they do. They do argue. Okay. Well, see, one of the things I'm not... Well, uh, let me see. Hang on. I, I, may, I may be lying to you. Yeah. I'm going to bring up the shadows a little bit. You notice what I didn't want to do is, is make this area here remove the shadow from here because we don't want that to be our focal point but it didn't because it's 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 bouquet it's 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 blurry it's it's not doing that but it did bring up the shadow of the rear end of the bird and the feathers which we do want brought up this shadow a little bit but not intrusively so I'm okay with that again we can bring the black down in a little bit um, you know again I'm not a big fan of it. Well, let's do the dehaze for a second, see if that does it. Sometimes you can just, if you dehaze a little bit, let me go back and see what it, yeah, let's dehaze a little bit um, and bring our clarity up a little bit for the feathers. Um, sometimes dehazing works better than touching the vibrance and, and the saturation um, to pull out like the colors of the beak and the colors of this. And the reason being is because dehaze um, really just takes the haze out weird that it's called that um what it, but what it does even more than that is it really um it, it takes the haze out and allows as if you have a polarizing filter on uh, to bring the natural colors out whereas saturation and vibrance are going to saturate and uh, make more vibrant the entire photograph which you don't necessarily want to do you want to bring out the vibrance of the feet, the vibrance of the beak, the pieces that are really, really colorful, and do it in a much more natural way. So I do like this. Um, I'm going to bring the clarity up a hair more because I really, really like clarity on feathers. I think the more you can see the actual um, different feathers, the, the nicer it is. It really gives definition to the bird. Okay. I like it. We didn't have to do a lot to that one either, which was fun. Oh, I've got two similar photographs. That's oh, this is the one with his mouth open. Okay, because I have that one highlighted. Um, what is this guy? Oh, random fish. Yeah, I really like the feathers in that one. I That's why I do like um, doing some bird photography, and, and I've done some in South Africa as well. Um, in, in a lot of places I've gone. This is the first time I've ever done the bird photography without a proper telephoto lens. But um, it still, it's still just it intrigues me, um, birds in flight. It's very intriguing. This, is a not, this was not our ship, our boat. It's not a ship, really, uh, but that's what they look like. That's what most of the catamaran yachts look like that are out there. Um, here's another one. This is, looks like it's an older one. Ours was a really, oh, that was kind of a curved, cool bird there. Um, this was, uh, I mean, ours was um, a, a much newer uh, catamaran, catamaran yacht, whatever they're called. Uh, all fur seals. You don't get to see many fur seals there. Uh, just, you know, they're, they're not all that common there. Um, sea lions are much more common. And of course, because of that, the um, fur seals, fur seal population is not high. Um, just looks like you want to cuddle them. I mean, it's so cute. These, these guys were the, were the ones that their, you know, their fur was stolen. Uh, for centuries. Humans. Can't live without them. Can't live with them. Um, let's bring the blacks down. You know, I also want to actually bring the highlights down. He's he's too, he's too highlighted. Um, we can bring the shadow. Well, yeah, give me the shadows up a little bit. Just... I have to see that there's another one of his friends there, and then there's a Sally there. I, but the, he's really highlighted, and you know, if actually if I bring that there and just take the exposure down a little bit, that's gonna help. 
Um, maybe also bring up the contrast. That helps a little bit. Um, he was really in a place where this was very dark and the sun was really shining on him. So he got a little bit, a uh, little too much light. And then we'll dehaze it a little bit. Though it doesn't really have a lot of effect, but we're just, we're just gonna dehaze it a tad. Uh, bump up the clarity. There, there's nothing to, uh, you know what, actually, we can get rid of some of this darkness and just leave him like that. We don't need his friend's flipper in the picture. Maybe a little bit distracting with the friend's flipper there. Um, I mean, there's some other things we could do to this. I don't think we need to, at least not right now. What a life, basking in the sun on a rock. Look at that. It's the height of lazy, right? Oh, here, here's some more water. Beep, beep, beep. Here's some more water shots. Whoa. Yeah, I, I'm literally, with my camera, just shooting right into the water. Uh, but that's how clear it is. It's, it's incredibly clear. Um, not a clue what I was taking a picture of there. Oh, sleeping baby. Let's see. Ah, this bird's in flight. Oh yeah, that was, that was nice. This was another, another ship. Um, no, this one, I don't think this was ours, uh, but we, as we were coming in, the sun was setting. I don't think, no, I did not. Oh, did I? I, I love this because of the sailing, the sail, sailboat, <laughs> sailing ship. What am I in? I just go back to 1785. Uh, the sailing ship and its pirate. Let's dehaze that. And then bring the shadows up. So we do a little correction there. Um, too much sky. Oh, let's get rid of that little boat. Okay, we can also bring this up a little bit. It's too bad it didn't have its sails up. It was anchored. All right, I'll think about that one. I'm going to flag it for later. All right, now these... Ugh, that was a bobbing boat. Um, okay, there's these two. Uh, I like this one with the... Oh, look at the little bird and the mommy bird and baby bird. Um, I actually like... Oh, hang on. Oh, and there's that one. Okay. That one, that one, nope, that one, and that one. I like that one because you can see the bird. All right, let's play with this one. Look at that, a clean lens again. How about that? Uh, develop. See, now this is where dehaze is really going to come in, and you're going to see how beautiful that works. Dehaze is you know, a gift from the gods. I don't know. Uh, dehaze is the same thing as having a polarizing filter on your camera. Um, it really, I mean, I, and I, I always keep really good polarizers with me. Um, very high quality polarizers because I'm old school, but I find that dehaze really works better than any high grade polarizer. Because again, you're, anytime you add a piece of glass onto the end of your lens, you're, 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 it's that much more that um, you're blocking light, blocking um, other aspects of the photograph. Still love polarizers. I still love filters, but 
the haze works just so beautifully. Again, let me take that back to to zero. Uh, it's okay. Nothing to write home about. We bring that dehaze up. It's a whole different photograph. So yeah, dehaze is a, a big favorite. Um, enhance the blacks because we see if if we're at zero, you can see that it's a black sand beach, but but let's let's really darken that. You can still see that it's a beach. You can still see that it's sand, but we've really enhanced the black. At the same time, it enhanced um, the the tide, the way the water's coming in, and it just in general, I think, makes it pop a little bit more. I am gonna crop this a little bit, um, not a lot. But just, just a little bit, uh, just to bring that up. Now we there is I don't can't tell if that's a cloud or an imperfection. Um, it's probably a cloud, but I don't like it, so I'm gonna take it into Photoshop. Thanks, Stabstark. Appreciated. Thanks for the follow. Um, okay. So we have a little thing there. We're just gonna get rid of that. I just didn't like it. I think it might've been a cloud, but it it looked like a water spot. So why have it? Let's get rid of it. These others, let's keep them. It adds um, a dimension and a little bit of character to the sky. So we really don't wanna to touch anything more than that. Really, really minor edit on that. And boom, it's gone. All right, now you see, we made some edits in Photoshop, so these all reset. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna do anything, but I, I, we could redo um, some of these things if we wanted to. Like, let's say we wanted to polarize it a little bit more, see how that works. We don't, so we're going to leave it where we had it. But these all reset so that you can you know, do some additional things. And we can maybe bring the shadows up a little bit, just a tad. Um, and, and I like that. I like that it's, it's golden hour. Uh, the, the sun is behind me. The, it's really hitting the rocks. You can see all the different patterns and the striations there. Uh, so I really, really like that. And I don't want to do anything different with it. I, as, as a landscape photograph goes, it, it, it's, um, it's not something we want to play with too much. So we're going to flag it. I'll export it later. I'm still bugged by this one from yesterday, how, how I can enhance that tier. Um, without, you know, let me, let me bring this one into Photoshop. Just for kicks and giggles. Let's, let's, let's see. If, doing a a dodge a bit of a dodge on the teardrop enhances it i don't know um we're doing the midtones yeah, that enhanced it a little bit. I think I think it. <coughs> excuse me. I think it did enhance it. We can bring the exposure up a hair. Yeah, that enhanced it. I I don't know though. I don't know if. I mean, does it just look like a booger coming from his eye now, <laughs> or does it look like a tear? Not really sure. What happens if we enhance the eye a little bit? No, I don't know. Yeah, actually, if I look over to the other screen and I'm, I'm looking at um, on the Twitch screen, it does. You can see that it's a tear. So, all right, all right, all right. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with it. And it's, it's not altering the original um you know all it did was that Ooh, no now i don't know if i like it yeah 
It, it doesn't look clear. It doesn't look like a tear. No, I don't like it. Changed my mind. All right, so I'm just gonna take the flag off of that one. You see, it didn't, it didn't alter what we've already done. So it didn't hurt anything because we edited a copy with Lightroom as opposed to um, having to do anything uh, in particular. So that works. Um, yeah, I don't know. I wish I knew of a really good way to enhance that, but we may just may have to leave it as is. Because I don't, I don't, I don't like how it made it white when when we did the dodge. So I'll leave it. Um, these are kind of fun. Cacti, lots of cactus there. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. These are in Quito. Oh, these guys were fun. These guys were just a blasty blast. Um, they were just playing music in um, the square, in the main square in Quito. And um, everybody in Quito, and actually Ecuador, is still masked. It's, it's still mandatory. Um, I don't think anything's changed yet. But these, so these guys were wearing these traditional um, uh, Quechua Indian um, masks and playing, and it's just really cool, very colorful. Couldn't resist um, tipping them for their hard work. They were <laughs> incredible musicians as well. Um, just pure joy. And I had to, I had to buy some things from this lady. Look at the just the character in her face, uh, indigenous uh, Quechua woman. Um, the character in her face, and I loved how she left the mask hanging down. For me, it really showed just the far-reaching aspects of, of this pandemic, how it, you know, reached all the way to indigenous people um, it, everywhere in the world. Uh, everybody was touched by this. So something I really, really liked about this photograph. And, and at one point she, you know, she almost went to take the mask off and I, I said, no, so it's okay. Um, I, of course I maintained my mask. Wasn't, I didn't, even though I was tested negative, completely, you know, COVID free, did not want to uh, last thing you want to do is infect anyone, um, especially in indigenous people that are not necessarily um, in the public as much and had as much exposure. So uh, that was something that was important to me. But it, her her face, the, just the the her eyes and the, and the, look at the the character, the lines. This is one of the things I love about older folks and older folks in other cultures. You know, here in, in the West, whether you're in Europe or in the United States, we, you know, we get facelifts. We, you know, we don't want these wrinkles. We don't want to, to show the character. This, the, in other cultures, this is a source of pride. This is an elder. And it's a sign of respect to have lived this long and to have wisdom of the ages. So um, there's, no, there's no shyness. There's no shame in not having your face lifted. Um, it just, this, she, she's beautiful as she is. And I really love taking uh, photographs of indigenous people, people all over the world, different cultures. This is why I call myself a cultural photographer and not just a wildlife, landscape, travel photographer. Cultural photographer because I like capturing culture all over the world. Um, just, I just love her face. This is her husband. Um, Interesting, I, it, the photograph did not come out well. Um, you can see him here. He's The, the, the women in, in this particular um, group of uh, Quechua actually are the ones that make the yarn and the men are the ones that uh, do the, the do work on the looms. Um, oh, here it is. This is, this I did, you know, I, I bought a couple of other things from them too, but I had to buy um, a piece that I'm going to hang up here in my office. Uh, do I have it upside down? I do not. Um, so hopefully you can see that. Um, just absolutely beautiful. And it's it's uh, Quechua men. I think it's Quechua men. Um, Quechua people. I don't know if it's men or women. I think it's Quechua men. Um, but with their backs turned towards us and, and their hats on, their traditional Quechua hats. 
and I just I just really really loved this piece and I'm going to and it's got little hangers so I can hang it from my my wall behind me um, I went for something that matched with purple as my wall is purple so um, absolutely loved uh, the work all handmade uh, that's another thing I love doing is um, I, I, I don't I don't I mean except for my I know my, my Starbucks coffee mugs wherever I go it's just a thing I don't know um, except for that I, I don't I don't buy a lot of stuff um, I what I tend to do is I like to buy artwork especially indigenous artwork pay, uh, pay a fair price to people for their work um, do it where the money is going directly to the artist directly to the people I prefer that as well as um, you know supporting people supporting local people supporting local artists I'm an artist I want to support local artists and um, supporting local cultures and then you bring back something special something that's a piece of um, a, another culture what what they're sharing with you they're sharing their work with you um, as you can see this these are not mass made in um, China or anywhere else um, this man is making these by hand on a loom um, you know seven days a week this is what he does um, th these people were at the uh, right at the equator uh, in Quito you can go to right the, the line the equator and I, I think I can I've got some oh maybe I don't have any photographs here no they're on my phone um, there's a there's a line that you can go to uh, which is called uh, uh, mitad del mundo center of the world and you can go and stand in the two hemispheres uh stand across the equator i mean not the two hemispheres uh oh yeah northern and southern sure okay you can stand in the in the two hemispheres and right at zero latitude zero 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 and this is this is where these people were um this husband and wife um, that, that have this shop there and they, all of this is made by hand all of their work just absolute brilliant artists so I, I, I had to capture this is not something that um, this particular photograph that I would uh, publish or you know put on my website or sell unless somebody particularly wanted it but this was more uh, a photograph for me uh, just to capture this uh, this process and what he was doing these hats that they wear uh, there's no strap and it's very heavy and it's very stiff and it's very good for posture. These people have incredible posture. Um, those hats will fall off if you if your posture is not correct. So just I, I just love um, here he is again. I just love indigenous culture, and <clears throat> I'm not sure why I have that one with a flag on it. Um, I love <clears throat> capturing indig indigenous cultures. And, um, oh yeah, you know, here you can see some, this is Ecuador, latitude zero, zero, zero. Um, just, just really, um, special. I, I really appreciate seeing cultures. This is Quito. Um, I, I liked this photograph. This is just all from way, this is about 11,000 feet. Quito is 10,000 feet. <gasps> yeah. When I got off the plane, I was gasping for air. Um, so a little bit of coca leaf, a little bit of, um, something called Diamox, which is a drug you can get when you do go to high elevations. Really recommend it because, yeah, we're not used to thin air. So I'll be taking that going to Cusco in Peru as well. This is, um, so Quito itself down in the valley there is about 10,000 feet and I am at 11,000 feet taking this photograph. Um... Oh, so anyway, let me go back. So this is a panorama photograph. This was um, a combination of about four photographs strung together and to make this one. And you can see that I have even more. These are the photographs that I put together to make that one. Uh, this is the Virgin Mary statue above Quito. This is up at 11,000 feet. That's 
Was I drinking? No, I wasn't drinking. I was sober. Oh, there we go. <laughs> That, so that's, um, that's the, it, it's made out of all aluminum tiles. It's the largest aluminum tile. I mean, it's like a Guinness World Book of Records thing, I guess. The largest, tallest tower made, or tower building made of aluminum in the world. I don't know. Um, really, really, it's lit up at night. So that's kind of cool. But um, just an interesting statue. Doggy! Love doggies. Love doggy pictures. Um, yeah, we looked at some of these yesterday and we... Oh yeah, that was... That was ornate. Alright, so now we're in the Galapagos again. Alright, let's go down. I'm just gonna swing down to back where we were. Yeah, that's the land iguana. Land shark. Oh. Yeah, it's it, okay. The, I kind of like this one. I'm not sure. Jury's out on that one. I like these just, it was golden hour and just the way the, the sun was hitting the cactus was kind of cool. Um, haven't made up my mind on any of those photographs yet. I mean, they're, they're cool for, I mean, you can see the storm coming in too. They're cool for golden hour, but there's nothing special about the photograph itself. These are kind of cool. Um, these little flying fish. Um, again, just taking him with my regular camera, I, not the underwater camera. Yeah, this one's better. You can really see the golden hour here and then the, the dark clouds behind. Yeah, that's also, that's also nice too, but I don't know. I mean, you, you know, you, after a while, you're taking photographs of everything and you, you, you have to make a choice. This is a nice sunset on the boat. Oh, turtles, yeah, so... Turtles. These are turtles because they're in the water. Tortoise land, turtle water. Um, I, I was just taking him from the deck of the boat um, as they were coming by. Not great photographs, just um, couldn't stop being in awe of the fact that there was a turtle swimming there. Um, funny story. So... We're sitting on the back of the deck, and there is a, um, I don't know if, I'm not, okay, I'm not trying to do anything custom order. What are you talking about? <coughs> <coughs> um, there was a um, sea lion trying to catch fish. And huge, huge sea lion, as you can see. Not really capturing it well. Um, it's in the water. Ah, that's something else. Uh, it's in the water. I'm having uh, cocktails. So oh. photography was not my main, uh, my main focus at that point in time. I think my cocktail was. Anyway, um, so a fish swims up, and we're like, oh, look at that beautiful fish. And right as we're saying that, um, the sea lion comes up from underneath the boat and whoo, chomp. Um, then the sea lion moves, and then a shark comes up and bites at the sea lion. So, I mean, the laughter and, and screaming, oh, Darwin, you're at it again, survival of the fittest. Um, it was crazy. Um, uh, yeah, a memorable moment. 
um, even without the cocktail, memorable moment, um, just to, to watch that stuff in action. It was, it was pretty crazy. Not a clue what I'm taking a picture of here. It was very early, like four o'clock in the morning. So there's that. Um, just, just the rocks were incredible. Rocks with all the bird poop. Um, the sea lion, see, yeah, sea lions playing around us. I actually got to swim with the sea lions. When you go snorkeling um, in the Galapagos, they're literally swimming all around you, and and they play with you. I mean, I would have sea lions come up underneath me and just bump me, just to play with me, not intending any harm whatsoever. Completely safe. There he is. There's a face. It's a face only a mother could love. Um, but they're just, they're just super, super playful and not threatened by humans. They're really, um, they, they see us as play toys. They see us as an, another sea lion. So they're, they're just kind of playing with us. I was a little nervous at first. I'm not going to lie, but it was really a lot of fun. And I'm not a great swimmer. Um, not sure what I'm photographing there. Uh, not a great swimmer. Um, I had my snorkel vest on. Uh, still was a little concerned. Oh, there's an angelfish. Um, and, and yet, um, I did it and, and, uh, I'm glad I did. I'm just shooting into the water, uh, because they're there. Oh, I edited that one a little bit. Eh, not crazy about it. I'll flag it. Um, a stingray. Saw quite a few stingrays, swam with stingrays. Uh, there were some on the beach. Um, thought of Steve or Irwin every time and watched my step very carefully uh, because they'll burrow themselves in the sand. And the last thing you want is to step on a stingray and have that tail come up. As an eagle ray, a spotted eagle ray. Whew, I'm impressed with myself for remembering that. Um, I don't have any though that I would that I would keep. I mean, they're, they're, it's cool that you can you can see it, but these are these are definitely not. Here's a you know as good as possible. Um, let's go to the underwater photographs. Actually, ah, that's me looking like I'm gonna be really cool. Uh, okay, yeah. I wasn't so cool. All right, so some underwater photographs. I, ju I there are a couple of really good underwater cameras out there. Um, I don't have one right here to show you. Hang on, I'll go get it. It's good to have a colorful um, underwater camera because you you want to be able to you know it, it should it should it untether from your hand for any reason you want to be able to uh, find it this one um, I got it used because they're just not available for some reason um, uh, new uh, they're back ordered uh, but it, it's just a Kodak um, it's a 15 meter of uh, 15 uh, 50 feet uh, waterproof camera so it can go pretty deep um, it has a really nice microphone on it, and it's compact, uh, relatively inexpensive as, as they go. I think I paid maybe about $130, $140 on eBay. Completely waterproof, and it was just handy. It was just really handy to have it. Uh, I don't do a lot of underwater photography, so I'm not going to spend a fortune on underwater gear or housing for the big camera or anything like that, because it's not my thing. Just wanted a little something. There are some others out there. Um, there's another one. Uh, and actually, you know what? Let's let's just let's just do a little search for underwater cameras. Um, you see, there's a lot of there's some throwaway ones. You can uh, go, but the GoPro is always good for it if you have a GoPro. Um, I had a GoPro, and then um, we gave it away. So poo poo. Um, this one, the, the Olympus uh, Touch TG6 is one of the better ones. 
um, but it is on the pricey side. Uh, one of the people on the trip had that one, and I, I had actually considered this. Um, but I, you know, again, I didn't want to invest that much in a camera that I really wasn't going to use more than maybe a few times in my life. So it would have just sat in the in the closet. Um, you can see it has incredible ratings. Someone did have, like I said, um, someone did have one of these, and it was it was. A nice little camera. Uh, some of the others out there. Uh, oh, you get you got the Nikon Coolpix W three hundred. Again, yellow. They're they're in bright colors so that you can find them if they, you know, go missing. But look, this is not available. Um, this one's not available. There's some others. Oh, there's one in red, but expensive. Five fifty four. Uh, 444. If you're not doing uh, a lot of underwater photography, you're probably not going to want to invest that kind of money in it. That's, you know, that's just reality. Uh, let's look at this Sea Life Micro. Um, again, cool. $599. I wouldn't do a black camera, though, uh, for underwater. Uh, this one is number one. I, I have, Oh, wow. What is this? Yeah, this is a professional scuba camera. So that's somebody who's really into doing it. 4K underwater, uh, 12 megapixel, uh, waterproof, waterproof to 350 meters. That that's that's some heavy duty stuff. Uh, Insta 360, not available. Oh, four. Yeah, here's here's one. 429. Um, cool, but really super pricey. Uh, Panasonic Lumix, a thousand dollars. Yeah. If you're going to do a lot of underwater photography, um, I mean, look at this camera only. This Sony, it's got a Zeiss lens, cool, but that's a lot of uh, money to spend if you are just doing this occasionally or going on one or two journeys. Even the even the Canon, very pricey. Uh, yeah, we looked at that one already. Uh, so yeah, they're cool, but very pricey. Now, um, if we, I mean, you have some throwaways for just basic stuff. Um, the one I, f I can't remember how I found it. Uh, Blue Water Photo Store. Let's see what they're recommending. Yeah, see, they're they're still going really high end. They're they're recommending um, high end and and oh, sorry, I just closed that screen. Um, let's let's actually put in here um, Kodak underwater uh, underwater camera. There we go. <laughs> you can see it came right up because I've been looking. So this is the one I got. Now I I paid a little bit less. I I got it actually for one hundred and thirty nine on eBay. Um, you see it's 197 there, there are a variety of prices out here. Somebody's selling it for $259. Um, I was lucky and got one for $139. But this, even if you're spending $197, that's much more reasonable if for something that you're not going to use that often. And, and the quality of the, photo, uh, the photographs are really, really good. I was pleased with it. I was pleased with the video. And, um, yeah. Um, the specs on it, let's see if we've got, yeah, here we go. So <clears throat> it's got a six time digital zoom, um, built in Wi Fi, which was cool. Uh, didn't use it, but it's cool. Uh, waterproof, uh, lithium ion battery, 16.35 megapixels, uh, optical zoom, a four, point, a four time optical zoom, which was good. Uh, but this is not giving us a lot of other stuff it used they all use the mini SD card so that is something to remember because they're they're small um, so yeah I, I I like it I, I was pleased with it I'll show you some of the photographs um, let's see and, and I, I would stay away from the disposables unless you're really you really don't care um, about the photograph and then then it doesn't matter um, Let's see what the specs on this are. So it's the Kodak something or other. Kodak Pix Pro. Um, 
it's this one. Yeah, the WPZ2 Pix Pro. Okay. WPZ Pix Pro. Oh, wow. Those are some funky cameras. That one's pretty wild. Uh, here we go. Yeah, the MSRP was 159 Um uh, it says it's available at Walmart. I don't think it is, um, unless they've come out. But the, the prices have gone up, obviously, as everything has. Uh, shockproof to 2 meters, 15 meter waterproof. It's got image stabilization, 1080p v, uh, video, so it's not 4K, if that's what you're looking for. I didn't care because they were more for my memories than for, you know, my photography. Um, good lens, 7 groups, 7 elements. It's got a, a pretty wide, good wide, and telephoto, um, 27 millimeter, uh, to 27 to 108, pretty decent. Autofocus, image stabilization, uh, pretty decent uh, megapixels uh, on still image, as well as uh, not 4K, but high definition. Um, you can do best, fine, and normal on image compression, which is pretty decent for a little camera like this. Still images are only going to be in JPEG. You cannot get raw. Uh, what I liked about it is it does have an, an, uh, just an underwater button, which was really cool. But you can do lots of different scene modes. Um, this is where, um, you know, museum leaf image stabilization. So you can use it for other things too, uh, but it is really a, um, an underwater camera. It's got red eye removal. Um, yeah, so just, just a nice handy little handy little camera Let, let's see if i hit buy what happens oh it's available so they were really back ordered for quite some time you don't need to spend 200 dollars on ebay oh no it is out of stock sorry yeah so it's been out of stock for a long time i don't know why um out of stock 120 dollars at uh, walmart out of stock it's been out of stock for a long time so if you want this camera which i i really liked it i'll, I'll be honest with you um, you're going to have to, you know, pay a little bit more and get it on eBay. So let's, let's look at some of the photographs though. Uh, actually, I'm going to play this video for you just cause it's kind of cool. And there I am. And I'm just swimming with these guys and playing with them. Uh, you see the, the video quality though is good. It's not high definition, but again, you're shooting underwater. So that's, not necessarily um, your first, there we go. That's not necessarily your first, uh, there I am and I'm swimming with them. Um, that's not your first foray or your first concern um, it is if it's, if it's just some underwater photography for you and it's not something you're using professionally, you don't necessarily need 4K. They sure do like to play. It's really cool, really cool stuff. Um, that was a little close. There we go. Um, not, you know, again, nothing 100%, but some cool stuff um, that this little camera can do. I mean, you know, for, for an underwater camera. Oh, this is fun. For an underwater camera. There I am. <laughs> super, super playful uh, critters. Um, just fun to fun to play with, actually. Uh, let's see. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 
that's three of us having a good time. Oh, there we go. Here, so here's a really cool shot with this camera. Under $200, and, and look at the clarity in that. I mean, that is just, I mean, granted, you have to have clear water, but uh, the clarity in that, and I want to keep that. We're going to... Um, we're gonna edit that. Let's bring some of this up too. Uh, the clarity in that is just outstanding um, for what it is. I mean, look at that. That is really, really outstanding for what it is. And we will mark that. Um, oh, there I am right there. I couldn't find myself. All right, so we'll just we'll do it this way. That was cool. You know, if actually, if we let's develop that a little bit and bring up the shadows. Look at that. Look at that. Bring it, just bring it up the shadow underwater from an underwater photograph. Um, inexpensive camera, and yeah, it, it's really, it's really doing a lot. Um, it's got autofocus, so you know it's it's not. This is kind of cool. Oh, I like that. Um, I haven't really looked at these photographs since I took them, so uh, memory's a little fuzzy. Uh, I don't want to get rid of the tail, and I don't want to get rid of the orange, but let's just bring that in a little bit. Okay. Um, but he's kind of cool, funky looking guy. Bring up the shadows a little bit bring up the shadows a little bit it's making him uh, pop a little bit more we'll flag that for later oh why did i do that didn't want to do that okay i just like how he's coming out of the hole there loads and loads of fishies Oh, I was hanging out on the ring. Just, just I sometimes I was uh, just kicking back on the ring and soaking up the atmosphere as well. Um, and this guy just, this is a a booby, and a blue footed booby, and he just oh, was an oh maybe it's a red footed booby. I think it's a I'm not really sure, but I was just having a blast, and then I swam over to him, and he was or she, uh, was just not, oh, it's a red-footed booby. Uh, not, uh, not a care in the world about um, playing with me. Uh, hang on. So, yeah, this, I'm, so then I, I'm kind of underwater taking a, I put the camera underwater, and the, the blue-footed booby was really fascinated with this yellow camera because the yellow really attracted it. So it followed the camera with its with its head down in there and I got a nice shot of it um, from underneath with its little head poking out, which was just a lot of fun. I really, I was laughing. Not, I mean, you know, they're, they're definitely characters, um, uh, the boobies. Uh, let's see what we can do. Bring the blacks down. Yeah, that's a red-footed booby. So there's the red feet and then the blue beak. Maybe I can bring the shadows up a little bit. No, that 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 definitely doesn't work. I have to bring the shadows down. Um, I would like to get. Oh, you know, I can do it just up here. <clears throat> Take some of the green out, uh, even though, you know, the water was a green hue. Um, eh. No, it's kind of hard to do, but I, I, I just, this was just fun. And um, again, nothing, nothing that I'm going to print or sell, but it was just fun for me. Whoops, didn't mean to do that. Just fun for me to um, take that photograph. Yep. 
this was, I'm looking at these really the first time with you guys. I haven't really looked at these uh, since I shot them. This is a fun one. What's the next one? Uh, no, I like this. I like this better. Um, I can't remember the name of this this fish. Boy, dehaze that. Look at how the dehaze really works there. You know, let's go back to this guy and see if we dehaze if that does anything. Bring the temperature back. Bring the shadows back up. Um, uh, too much on the dehazing. It helps a little bit. It's still very green. I'm going to have to think about that one. Okay. Um, so back to this one. That was fun. Um, look how, even underwater, how dehaze works. It's like putting a polarizer on your on, on an underwater camera. Um, really love that. It's making these little silverfish pop, too. We can... Um, Bring the shadows up a tad. Take the highlights down a tad from the sun coming into the water and the reflection. That's just fun. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna flag that. I'm gonna flag that. Okay. Um, whoops. Sea anemone anemone. Um, oh, that was a good one. Hang on, we'll we'll flag it and come back to it later. That's a, part of my workflow. Oh, what I do is when I when I first look through the photographs, you know, I'll flag some things and then come back to them. Uh, sometimes by hitting the attribute, and which is, oops, <laughs> oh, it's going to develop. Um, attribute should come up or not. Okay, maybe not. Um, we'll get to that later, but um, if, if you flag it, then oh, that's, that's why because I can't be in the photograph. All right, so then attribute, and then you can hit that, and you're you can go back and work on uh, photographs that you liked or thought you might want to do something with. Uh, that's where we were. All right, so we're gonna just kind of page through and see if what other things we like. Uh, these are kind of cool. Let me come back to these. I mean, you know, really for an, a, a cheap, uh, under $200, because I wasn't going to invest any more. I paid $139. Um, inexpensive uh, underwater camera. It really did a pretty decent job. That's kind of cool. Oh, look at that. A uh, 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 conch. A conch shell. Um, that's... I know. Take that. <clears throat> we put it right back. Um, so those were not taken out. Nothing was taken out. Uh, ah, Diego. There's my. There. There's me with my. Uh, my Diego. I'm his Dora, and he's my Diego. <laughs> yeah, the little sea lion. Uh, and I say little, and not little. Uh, jumped on our boat. We had to kind of chase him away. We were swimming with a penguin. That was that was really fun. <laughs> That's a friend who couldn't get her flippers off. Oh, that was that was me just taking a picture of two of my, my cohorts. Um, we do have some shark photograph, shark video too, let's see. There, yeah, there's the shark. You can see it was a short video because I, <laughs> I was a little bit nervous. All right, maybe this might be better. It's a white-tipped reef shark. crazy not a big not a big fan of sharks
was I thinking? Yeah, I, I don't know. What was I thinking? Insanity. I was a shark. I like to be top of the food chain. I mean, you know, on, on land, I'm okay with it, moderately, but underwater, I don't swim well. What was I thinking? <sighs> Whoops, apparently I wasn't thinking. Yeah, I was a little nervous on that one. <laughs> The last one all right so some fun underwater stuff um this is cool uh <clears throat> i really like the um the underwater camera um just as a, a, a fun little fun little gadget to have um i will definitely uh take this with me um when i go on um, any any type of trip that has an underwater um, situation, I I left it in Quito um, and did not bring it to the Amazon with me. Um, would have been fun had I done that, although it didn't end up happening because of the rainstorm. But we were going to attach this to and and then another person's GoPro. Um, the the naturalist there was going to attach this to a stick. Uh, that he had created uh, for just this purpose and it, it the stick also had like a hook that he could put some meat on and then he was going to lower it into the water to capture the piranhas coming in and just chomping down on the meat but the water was too murky because of the storm um, so we didn't do that it turned into white water so we didn't do that but um, at first, I was a little sad that I didn't have my camera, that I had left it in my luggage in Quito and didn't bring it to the Amazon, but we didn't end up getting to do that anyway. All right, folks, um, thanks for joining. Uh, thank you to my followers. I do appreciate that. Um, and uh, some of you, um, like Spetty, that has been listening while working, um, have a great one, and I'll see you tomorrow. Ciao, ciao.